Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, glad to be here. Uh, uh, good afternoon here. It's morning. I'm talking uh, about Jerusalem here from Jerusalem. So it's uh, Zoom Marvels. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I will start. I will talk uh, basically on the archaeological topic of the uh, pottery of Jerusalem in the Iron Age. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, if we're talking about mainly the uh, what we call the Iron Age II or the biblical period or the monarchic period, uh, uh, Jerusalem is a capital city. Although it is debated what happens in the in the first stage of the Iron Age uh, too, uh, the first, the tenth and ninth century BC, uh, do we have the United Monarchy or not? It's, it is debated, but it's uh, quite a consen consensus that. Uh, it's a capital city, at least from the uh, 8th century, probably the late 9th century BC, uh, of the Kingdom of Judah. Uh, so it is a, a special site uh, or within this uh, <clears throat> the Southern Levant, at least from the political point of view. Uh, and we know that from uh, both uh, archaeology and uh, also external uh, texts. Uh, in the previous lecture, there, there was some uh, information about Jerusalem in the Iron Age. So basically, uh, we are talking about uh, three areas. One area is what we call the City of David, which is the core of the city of uh, the ancient site of Jerusalem during the Bronze and Iron Ages. And we have uh, uh, the Temple Mount. And in between, we have what we call the Ophel uh, area, which is in between here, this arrow in between the city of David and, and the Temple Mount. Uh, and we also have in some stage also um, uh, enlargement of the city to the Western Hill. So these are, are the areas which we have uh, archaeological remains uh, substantial for, for the Iron Age uh, period. Um, just a few words about the archaeological remains of the Iron Age. Uh, the earlier period is attested more significantly in the Ophel area, which is uh, just uh, south of the Temple Mount and uh, above the City of David. And we have uh, an area with uh, both uh, remains from the earlier stage of this period, the 10th or maybe the 9th century, and uh, from the later stage uh, of the 8th and 7th and uh, 6th century BC. And we also have uh, some evidence from public buildings. Maybe this is the only area which really uh, for uh, sure there are uh, public buildings excavated in the from the Iron Age uh, in the site of Jerusalem, I think. Uh, the other uh, areas are a bit uh, disputed. So we have uh, even during the 10th or 9th century uh, it's also debated, does it is, uh, really date to the de days of Solomon, or maybe it's uh, a century later. Uh, this is some substantial remains of some public building uh, uh, just below the Temple Mount in the Ophel area. So this is uh, uh, what we have uh, uh, in this area of the Ophel. And in the city of David, uh, mainly the Igal Shiloh excavation, we have uh, uh, a uh, context of uh, of domestic, uh, private houses, houses of officials, other context. And we have, uh, as I said, remains from the Bronze Age, uh, but uh, up to the Iron Age too, there are really meager remains. I mean, there are not so many remains from the early Iron Age and even the uh, Iron Age 2A, what we call the 10th and 9th centuries, uh, there are only few remains not much uh, architectural remains from this period, or at least what we can identify uh, really uh, uh, clearly. And the most of the remains are from the eighth and uh, seventh and sixth centuries uh, towards the, the Babylonian destructions. And there are several houses here with many finds, and, uh, et cetera, and uh, of course, uh, pottery. And during the eighth century, we have uh, uh, also uh, some remains in the Western Hill to the West, uh, and uh, it seems like the city is expanding uh, during this period. So this is the archaeological uh, framework, 
in a large, and uh, I will talk, uh, focus on the pottery. So the pottery, uh, the RNH pottery of Jerusalem uh, was studied uh, uh, published in several reports, mostly in the reports of uh, uh, the City of David, the Kedem series, uh, several reports uh, of the uh, pottery of Jerusalem and also a uh, Lat Mazar recent, more recent uh, excavations uh, in the City of David. And also uh, we have uh, uh, reports on, on the Ophel, uh, old excavations and new excavation of uh, Binyamin Mazar and Elat Mazar. So we have a lot of uh, data, a lot of uh, pottery published. But uh, um, generally, uh, from the beginning, uh, you can, if you look at the pottery, it seems it's rather uh, boring. I mean, generally, it's, it's rather uniform uh, in, in, in topology, and also in fabric, possibly. And also, if you look uh, for imported pottery, it's quite rare, and this was also pointed out from the for, for decades. Uh, and this time somehow is strange because you know Jerusalem, such an important uh, place, such a special place. But the pottery is very ordinary. I mean, it's not uh, nothing special in the pottery if you compare it to other sites. And I will talk uh, later about that. So how, how come? Uh, and also uh, uh, how come? Uh, uh, there is no imported uh, vessels or containers and, and uh, evidence for trade according to the pottery. So this is a question uh, that was raised, but it was not checked, uh, I think, uh, thoroughly. Um, uh, we don't have, if you're talking about the pottery production uh, in Jerusalem, because this is basically what we are checking, what to look at the pottery, if it's locally made or uh, imported, the question, where was it produced? So we don't have uh, any Iron Age pottery workshops or kilns in Jerusalem proper. We have a, a big uh, a site for produ uh, pottery production about five kilometers to the west of City of David, but it's later, it's Hellenistic uh, up to late Roman, uh, but not uh, during the Iron Age. So uh, uh, there are not so much technical, uh, technological studies on the pottery of Jerusalem in the Iron Age. So on this background, uh, I initiated a study, uh, which is a technological and compositional study of Iron Age II uh, pottery from Jerusalem about uh, nine or 10 years ago. And uh, uh, I, uh, we have uh, analyzed a lot of the pottery from, uh, from Jerusalem, from the Iron Age II, from the uh, archeological excavations. Um, and this was published also uh, four years ago in a monograph uh, series. So uh, 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 the study was basically uh, main objects were to identify uh, the profiles uh, when we are dealing with the uh, sources of pottery, the profiles uh, petrographically and chemically of the of the production of Jerusalem, which is not so wasn't so clear before and also product, uh, identifying production centers and production modes. Are, is really the all the pottery uh, similar? Was it all produced from the same type of clay in the same spot maybe uh, or not? And also check, is it, do we have a uh, trade? How much trade do we have? How much risk distribution uh, evidence about uh, both tableware and uh, um, storage vessels? Uh, so we are uh, we're checking this throughout the Iron Age II from the 10th to the uh, 6th century BC. Uh, so the study uh, included uh, 450, about 450 uh, uh, samples of, of Iron Age II uh, vessels from uh, three uh, areas that I noted, the Ophel excavation of uh, Binyamin and Elat Mazar and the city of David uh, uh, of uh, Gal Shiloh mostly and the Jewish quarter uh, Avigad excavation. <laughs> and uh, 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 we sampled uh, not all uh, types of pottery. We kind of focused on uh, uh, main types. Uh, this was funded by the ISF uh, uh, fund, and uh, uh, the neutron activation was carried uh, by Professor Hans Momsen from Bonn University. So uh, basically there are three uh, categories which we sample, tableware, uh, which is uh, mostly open vessels, uh, bowls, etc., cetera, uh, cooking vessels and uh, storage vessels, which you can see here. And the uh, reason was that uh, bowls and uh, tableware, uh, they are very common types. 
uh, so uh, uh, they are kind of the, the low the regular pottery uh, cooking pots uh, often have a different production mode and different fabric so we also uh, check these and storage vessels are important because uh, they represent a tr may represent a trade in commodities maybe taxes and this is very uh, important if you're talking about the capital uh, city uh, what what is the evidence for that and there was also some uh, uh, analysis of uh, vessels that were different typologically, not regular ones, like not the commonware, uh, Philistines or imported uh, by typology and check really if they come, where they come from. So uh, uh, I will talk a bit on the, um, on the compositional study. Uh, we have to check what is the, what, uh, what we call the site catchment. The, the clays that are available in the in the area of the city of David of the site or the RNA site of Jerusalem, and generally uh, it's uh, also geologically Jerusalem is an interesting place because it sits on the border zones, both uh, uh, climatically and geologically, what we call the water divide line because it's the ridge of the central uh, uh, hills. So uh, uh, the eastern part and the western part are a bit different, and we have different soils and different uh, even climate on the, uh, these two uh, parts. We have three general types of soils that can be used for uh, pottery uh, production. Uh, one is the terra rosa soil, mostly to the west, and uh, two is the mozza clay, uh, which is mostly also to the west and to the south, and the renzina, more calcareous soil, uh, which is mostly to the east. So all of these are not far, are, are available for the potters of Jerusalem so they can be used. And uh, um, indeed, when we did the petrography, we saw that uh, vessels were produced from all of these types of clay and not all of them are the same, but there is one dominant uh, uh, type of clay which was used in both uh, parts of the RNH2, the, what we call the terra rosa uh, type of clay, <laughs> which you can see here, uh, Group one, Terra Rosa, uh, uh, which is a reddish, uh, uh, not very calcareous clay. And, uh, and you can see already that these three groups are the main, uh, the local groups are the main uh, components of the assemblage. And the other uh, types are really rare and important pottery is really uh, very few. And I will uh, elaborate on this. Just a bit of the uh, petrographic uh, groups. As I said, the, the main group is the terra rosa related clay. Uh, it is a, a clay with a lot of uh, quartz and uh, both uh, sand and uh, uh, kind of dust and also uh, some uh, uh, limestone fragments. Uh, and there is uh, one group which is made of this clay, but without the sand fractions, very levigated uh, fine clay. And the other type of uh, clay is a renzina type clay, which is uh, has much more chalk. It's not uh, very different from the other one, but it has more uh, uh, chalk and uh, calcareous uh, inclusions and, uh, and uh, fossils and stuff like that. Uh, so this is a, a photo. Uh, here is the the, uh, the types that were made from the uh, terra rosa clay. Uh, for example, all the cooking pots were made from this clay. None are made hardly from any other type of clay. And also most of the bowls and the uh, tableware, what we called, and some of the decorated vessels. Um, so this is the, the terra rosa type clay. And then we have the mozza clay, which is uh, 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 characteristic by this dolomite. You see these... Uh, rhombic uh, uh, inclusions. This is dolomite. It's full of dolomite, very calcareous clay, and it's very common to the hilly area of uh, of uh, Israel. And we have it to the west of the city of David. And uh, uh, it was uh, it, interestingly, this is not the most dominant clay, even though uh, uh, in the previous publication uh, it often was equaled with the uh, Jerusalem production. This mozza type clay. Uh, so uh, uh, we can identify it uh, by petrography very easily, uh, but according to this uh, chemical study, the chemical analysis, the uh, NAA, we can see uh, the mozza clay is not always the same composition. We like we have uh, here 
all of this uh, uh, group actually is, uh, uh, we call it Hebron, because it's probably uh, located in Hebron, but it's also mozza clay. So it's not uh, necessarily from Jerusalem if we have a mozza clay. Uh, here, this is the, actually the group which is uh, very uh, similar. I mean, it's equal to the group of the Terrorosa clay, Jerusalem uh, B, and it's also, uh, we had some wasters from the, uh, from the uh, Roman period uh, kilns, which were also the same chemical composition. So we know this is really a Jerusalem production for sure. So we have it both chemically and petrographically, and we have these uh, several uh, groups. And what is interesting, we have in the mozza clay, we don't have uh, any cooking pots made from this type of clay. Uh, a few, some of the open vessels, the table where the, uh, vest, the uh, bowls are made from this clay and the containers, most of the containers are actually made of this type of clay. You can see here the storage vessels uh, are, this is dominant clay. And uh, the tableware and the cooking pots, this is not very dominant. So something interesting is happening here. This mozza clay, which can be from the vicinity of Jerusalem, but also form around the hill country around it too. So this interesting uh, point, and we also have it from uh, Hebron region. Like here, we have uh, some of the vessels were linked with this uh, chemical group. Uh, it's We cannot distinguish by vitrography if it's from Jerusalem or Hebron because it's mozza clay, but uh, the chemical analysis uh, points to a, a, a production in Hebron about uh, 40 kilometers to the south. Uh, over 30, something like that. So we know there is some uh, vessels, mostly uh, containers coming from a uh, Hebron area, like this big uh, pythons uh, with the inscription Le uh, Sarah uh, Ophim, which means the, to the chief baker found in the Ophel from the 8th century and the uh, royal bakery. And uh, the clay, the, 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 the pot was made in Hebron. It's interesting talk, uh, point. And we can see all the, uh, the, the vessels that were also probably imported from Hebron uh, region. So if we're talking about a uh, uh, longer distance trade, okay, like from different region, because Hebron is not very uh, far from uh, from Jerusalem. It's also within the, the kingdom of Judah, let's say the same political unit, but let's say, longer distance uh, uh, trade. Uh, the only evidence is uh, some trade from the region of the coast or Philistia, what we call Philistia, uh, the coastal plains. And there are some vessels uh, imported from uh, that region, uh, hardly any, there are only a few from Cyprus and Northern Israel, only a handful, uh, less uh, than 10% uh, are imported from uh, further regions outside of the, the, the regional area. And for example, uh, there is no links with the area of Beersheba, the, uh, which is to the south, or uh, uh, Phoenicia, very few uh, evidence for this uh, uh, trade, according to the pottery. And we, as I said, there is only evidence to uh, uh, links with this uh, Philistine, Philistine sites, and uh, uh, also both local and uh, and uh, imported uh, vessels from Philistia, which we call typologically also late Philistine, that are decorated with the black and white. And uh, uh, I would say this is uh, evidence for both cultural connections and the trade uh, between the two regions. And we have uh, we know there are some connection between uh, Jerusalem and Judah and Philistia during this uh, period. Uh, of the uh, 10th and 9th century. Also the figurines, we have some figurines which are Philistine uh, types uh, in the city of David. So uh, we have uh, some, some connection there. So uh, the question is how come we have uh, so less, so a few imported vessels? You would expect, as I said, that as a capital city, uh, uh, Jerusalem will have more inputs. It's, it's economic center. It would be a center for taxation. You should see more like taxes, maybe uh, commodities coming from uh, various regions. Also, it's a, it's a capital city, so there would be some political relation. We know this from the from the biblical text and some, how come there are no vessels from, uh, I don't know, Egypt and uh, uh, regions uh, uh, like that or Phoenicia. 
And they also it's a religious center for all the countries. So people, people are coming, pilgrims are coming. How come they are not bringing their own vessels? So it's a bit strange, uh, you would say, uh, for Jerusalem, but it, it is a fact uh, uh, that we have this uh, evidence according to the pottery. You should, uh, we should point out that we do have some other uh, evidence for imports, for trade. We have a lot of fish bones, which is evidently imported from uh, both the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. We have seashells, we have ivories, we have uh, imported wood from the coast, from the north, from the Jordan Valley. We have some uh, uh, South Arabian inscriptions. So we have uh, evidence uh, otherwise than pottery for uh, uh, trade, but not in the pottery. Uh, so the pottery is kind of uh, shows a lot of closeness, yeah. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you, but uh, you ran out your time. So okay. Please, uh, can you uh, conclude in two minutes? Okay, okay. I will just summarize. So we don't uh, we don't have so much import as I said in the pottery. Uh, the reason is still unclear. We have some evidence of taxation because we have uh, both in the jars the inscriptions and the evidence for in text for taxations. And the pottery also comes, as I said, with mozza clay, which would come from Hebron or other places in the vicinity of Jerusalem. So the taxation of the commodities of the jars was from this region. And uh, that's why we have them made from uh, mozza clay. And uh, possibly we have this more evidently in the late Iron Age uh, too, because maybe uh, after the Assyrian conquest, there was more pressure for having more taxes. So they were collecting more taxes, maybe from the vicinity of Jerusalem. And maybe Stuavimit was giving to the Assyrians. So this is uh, uh, what happens maybe in the late Iron Age. Uh, as I said, uh, imports that were rare and we have some indication of local uh, taxation and we have this Philistine connection. And uh, otherwise uh, really uh, we don't have so many imports from uh, of pottery, but other commodities are uh, probably imported, maybe in different, in other vessels. Okay, so thank you.